Uh, welcome back to uh, the LTE interface training. We go now to the chapter 2, which is about the three GPP releases. Uh, so this is the standardization uh, organization, which is development, developing mobile telecommunication standards, starting with UMTS. These are some of the important steps of the standard development, starting with GSM, which was the first version of GSM, as well as GPS, uh, were developed by the, uh, the European Telecommunication Standards Institute, but it's a worldwide standard and during the widespread use of GSM, it was decided to found a new standardization organization which involves uh, players from all over the world. And this organization is called 3GPP. And the first standard they developed was in the year 1999 and therefore the release was called release 99. It, it was the first release introducing UMTS, Universal Mobile Telecommunication System, offering a data rate of 2 megabit per second and so fulfilling the requirements of the ITU for a system of the third generation. The next release after release 99 was release 4 which is not shown here but the first important step in the development of the radio technology was the introduction of high-speed data packet access and this is HSDPA which uh, has higher data rate than the first version of UMTS, increased from 2 to 40.4 megabit per second. The downlink was improved. The next important step for the radio technology was the release, was in release 6, and it was about the uplink. HSUPA, high speed uplink packet access enhanced uplink is also another um, term which is used for this technology and it offers 5.76 megabit per second in the uplink. A further development was in the release 7 and 8 on UMTS which is called HSPA. HSPA includes as well as HSDPA downlink improvements as well as HSUPA uplink improvements and the plus uh, shows that there are still further improvements higher data rates including MIMO transmission a transmission on several uh, carriers simultaneously in offering data rates up to 42 megabit per second. The 3GPP release 8 was the first version, the first release which introduces LTE interface with data rates up to 300 megabit per second. The standard, well, we have still already other releases one important step next after release 8 is release 10, introducing LTE Advanced. And in 2016, we have already finished, seen the finishment of final finalization of release 12 and already opened the release 13 and 14. And we have already some developments on the fifth generation, 
which is expected for release 17, which will be in around the year 2020. So the next chapter is about the radio interface technique. We are looking at the different possibilities, what, what we have on the interface. Um, first we have FDMA, frequency division, multiple access, which was the first ex multiple access scheme uh, introduced in mobile phone systems. <coughs> then we have DMA, which uh, was only possible after introduction of digital systems, uh, because we have division in time and this needs digitalization. Then the third option is CDMA, which is code division multiple access. And finally, we have OFDMA, orthogonal frequency division multiplexes. So let's start with frequency division multiplexes. Um, in this multiple access schemes, the different users use different frequency channels or frequency carriers. So here in this picture, you can see we have a uh, capacity for four users on the interface, which can be distinguished in uh, the frequency. So the capacity of one frequency carrier can be used by different users simultaneously or quasi quasi simultaneously by using TDMA technology, time division multiple access. So in this case, several users use the same frequency channel, but they send and receive at different times. So they can be, the system can distinguish between the users by the so-called time slot. Let's have an example. The most important system which uses TDMA is GSM, where on one frequency channels there can be phone calls from up to eight users and there's also a high capacity um, feature in GSM uh, multiplexing up to 16 users on just one frequency channel. We have another uh, dimension which can be used to distinguish different users on the interface, which is the so-called code. In this case, several users use the same frequency at the same time, but they can be divided by using different codes, which are orthogonal to each other, and by multiplying the received signal by a certain co a code, I can extract the signal from just a single user. This is CDMA. Finally, we have OFDMA, which is orthogonal frequency division multiple access, which uses the same dimensions like GSM frequency and time, the difference lies in the orthogonality. Means that the so-called subcarriers, which are used by different users, are precisely orthogonal to each other. They, this means they don't interfere with, another, with each other. In contrast to GSM, where we have to use a certain frequency gap between different users so that they have no interference. Here we have the orthogonality 
and this guarantees that there is no interference between neighbor frequencies. And you see also in LTE, in OFDM, we use the time frame as another possibility to distinguish between different users. Thank you for watching.